The river otter, or Lantra canadensis, is the most common, and perhaps most adored, water mammal in the North American waterways. These slinky little buggers are known for being playful, friendly, sociable, and curious. So you might be interested to hear that, apart from grouping up to play or hunt, they're actually rather solitary and nomadic. Perhaps this explains why they've been observed to exhibit a promiscuous mating system, with females being approached by several males until they accept a mate. Unfortunately, despite how cute and sweet we think otters are, these courting attempts are far from adorable. Population, when it's accepted, can take anywhere from 16 to 72 minutes, during which the male holds a female by the neck with his teeth. Female otters are induced or spontaneous ovulators, so perhaps such a long and vigorous copulation ensures she releases an egg for fertilization. Though I happen to like this theory, I couldn't find any research on the topic, so the copulation length remains a mystery to me. What we do know is that females will delay embryo implantation for 8 to 11 months while they find or build a den and ready it for optimal child rearing. After giving birth to two to three rather altricial babies, the female will care for them extensively until they're able to swim and hunt on their own. Sometimes her offspring will even stay with her until she bears her next litter the following spring. Most social groups within this species consist of a mother and her offspring. However, male otters have been observed to form hunting or play groups. Although we don't know much about otter sociality because of difficulty studying them in the wild, some captive research has been done that gives interesting insight into how these floppy boys interact. River otters create communal latrine sites for waste excretion, though often these sites are also used as places to scent mark. In 1999, a group of scientists decided to do some research on this behavior to find out why exactly the otters scent marked in this way. It was a test of several hypotheses, though two of the most important proposed that scent marking was done as communication, either of hierarchical placement or reproductive availability. To test these hypotheses, the researchers placed 15 wild-caught otters in a large test area and determined their places in the hierarchy. Over a series of days, they would separate one otter into a smaller test area that contained the feces of two different creatures, either a familiar otter and an unfamiliar otter, or a female otter and a male otter. The researchers then observed how often and for how long each otter investigated each scent. Using scientific math and graphing, they then determined which attributes had the greatest effect on investigation time. From their data, the scientists determined that the male otters tended to investigate the scents of males more than females, and that dominant otters spent a much greater amount of time investigating other male scents than subordinate otters did. Captive research such as this shows us many things about river otter sociality that we might never be able to investigate in the wild. For instance, we now know that they have hierarchies that dominant otters might be very interested in keeping their place in. In other words, otter play might not be nearly as friendly as we think it to be. It also shows us that scent marking does not necessarily have anything to do with reproductive signaling. This tells us more about the otter's rather understudied mating system, which is important in furthering scientific and conservational work. Meaning, the more we learn about otter reproduction and sociality, the more we can assure that these floppy boys keep flopping for as long as this earth can hold them.